chapter 2, verse 18. We're going to talk about the end times and the Antichrist. On Sunday, we talked about Daniel and looked at some things from Daniel and 2 Timothy chapter 3 about signs of the end time. Tonight, we're going to look at the end times and the Antichrist. Just really felt led of the Lord to share this with you tonight. So 1 John 2.18 tells us the Antichrist by that title is mentioned about five times in Scripture. And, uh, but he's known by many other titles. And it says, little children, it is the last time. And as you've heard that Antichrist, singular, shall come, a future coming of one person, John said here, this is alternately dated somewhere in the 60s to the 90s A.D., even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So the last time started almost 2,000 years ago. Peter on the day of Pentecost said that was the last days. And so God has just extended the last days out for about 2,000 years out of his grace and his mercy. Paul phrased it like this. He said we just know that his coming is closer now than when we first believed. We used to sing a song, you might remember, he's coming soon, he's coming soon. And uh, we don't know the time of his return. It might be morning, it might be night, it might be noon. But we know he's coming soon. How many of you know Jesus is coming? Hallelujah. Amen. He's coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. I want to be one of those that he finds ready and watching for his coming. And uh, when you see these certain things come to pass, look up. Or your redemption draws nigh. I'm looking up. Amen. Everybody else is looking at the DNC, the RNC. I'm looking at the J-E-S-U-S-C-H-R-I-S-T. Amen. Jesus Christ. Now, we need to pray for our elections, that God would keep us a free country to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that God would keep us motivated to continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ but don't put your hope in the Democrats or the Republicans. You better put your hopes in Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, they're trying to say, who's the worst? Well, I know who's the best, and that's Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Why don't we pray and ask God to open our hearts and present the truth of the Word of God tonight. Let's everybody talk to Jesus together. God, I glorify you. I love you. There's power in your Word. It is quick. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword of dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Bone and marrow, it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Nothing is hid from the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Your word, God, is a searchlight and searches us out. God, let us receive the seed of the word of God. Let it grow up into something powerful in our lives, God. Let the truth make us free tonight. Let the anointing break the yoke off of our lives. And God, we will just give you all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. It belongs to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, speak only as the oracles of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we ask it. Amen. And why don't we just thank the Lord for the word of God tonight. God, we prepare our hearts to receive your word, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. 1 John 2.22 says this, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. As we're going to look tonight, that the spirit of Antichrist is merely someone that when you look at the person of Jesus Christ, you don't just see a great person of history. You don't just see a prophet. You don't see a demigod. You see the almighty God. Amen. You see the Father in flesh. So in Jesus Christ, you have to have the Father, which is the spirit creator, and the Son, which is the humanity, that which was born in Bethlehem. And so if you are looking at something else other than that, when you're reading about Jesus Christ in the Bible, that is a false God. That is a false deity. And so we have to have the searchlight of the Spirit of God, the revelation, the understanding of the glory of God, the Shekinah of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So this is a very biblical thing. So the Antichrist is known by many titles in the Scripture. Anything that would present a different view of a biblical view of Jesus Christ is Antichrist. But why? Because it is trying to get us to serve something that is not the correct deity. 
It is not the correct Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about other Jesuses, another Jesus, and false Christ, false apostles, all of this deception. So, when we look at Jesus Christ, we have to have the Spirit of God, the Creator, and the humanity of God. So anything that teaches anything other than that is the spirit of Antichrist. You might be sincere, but if you're worshiping the wrong thing, you're sincerely worshiping the wrong thing. We must worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's right. So here's some of the titles that the Antichrist, that, that one, the deceiver, he's known by doctrine, but he's got other descriptions as well, that... Uh, some of the names he's known of. The idle shepherd. He wants to be worshipped. The lawless one. The beast. The willful king. The little horn. The prince that shall come. Daniel 9. Little horn. Daniel 7. The spoiler. The son of perdition. The man of sin. 2 Thessalonians 2. These serve to give us a glimpse into the character and nature of Antichrist. So the spirit of Antichrist denies that in Jesus Christ is both the Father and the Son. So let's take Islam for instance. Now obviously we love Islamics. Uh, we took the students to Stone Mountain yesterday. We wanted to do something fun with them before they left. The place was full of Islamics. I love Islamics. I want them to get the Holy Ghost, get baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, they got a lot of you know, good traits in them in, in all of this kind of stuff. But they would not say that Jesus Christ is God in flesh. They would say God did not have a son. So that would be, as sincere as they are, that would be the spirit of Antichrist, even though they individually may not understand that. It is up to us to pray for them, up to us to witness to them, up to us to love them and share them the truth. Um, we would take Mormonism and they would say something. They would not say that Jesus Christ is the Father in flesh, the Father incarnate. So as good as Mormon people are, my goodness, there's some good Mormon people. They take two years out of their life at their own expense to go door knocking. In that two years, they'll make one phone call home, and that's the mom on Mother's Day. And so... They are just knocking doors. They are so zealous. But they're like Paul. Paul was zealous too. And Paul was wrong until he had that Damascus Road experience and found out Jesus Christ was Almighty God. So other world religions that would have something other than Jesus Christ in Jesus is both the Father and the Son. That's the spirit of Antichrist. So you can always know the spirit of Antichrist. Why? Because they're always trying to tell you God is something less than God. That Je in Jesus, you know, the Bible says that in Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So the spirit of Antichrist would say, no, it's something less than all the fullness of the Godhead. Jesus said in John 14, he says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And then he goes on to explain, he says, the Father in me, he doeth the works. So, if you have a difficult time with that, you really need to pray for a revelation and understanding from Almighty God. Because, again, if we're worshiping the wrong Jesus, we're going to get the wrong salvation as well. Amen. And Jesus equated salvation and knowledge of Him in John chapter 4. He said the Jews know what they worship for salvation of the Jews. So, and, uh, and now Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. The spirit of Antichrist denies that in Jesus Christ is both the Father and the Son. Let's look at some scriptures about that right now. 2 John verse 7. For many deceivers are in, entered into the world. Now let's stop right there. Many deceivers. Now a deceiver is not an outright evil person to the outward person. They're deceiving you. They may come as an angel of light. But they're evil inside. Inwardly, they are ravening wolves. Now, Paul told us under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, he said, evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse. So John says, many deceivers are entered into the world. 2,000 years later, what do you think it is? <laughs> many deceivers were there, and it's going to wax worse and worse. 
So you might be like me. I can remember sitting in my living room saying, God, what is the truth? I want to know the truth. God, I don't know, what, is it this, is it that? I got these people door knocking. I got people that live next door. I grew up in a certain religious organization. God, what is the truth? I'm glad when we study scripture, when we pray, God hears the cry of the humble heart and he'll show you and I the truth. And the truth is plainly revealed in scripture to us. So, many deceivers are entered into the world. A deceiver is someone who appears to be one thing and is something different. It's a, like a hypocrite or something, but these are intentional deceivers. And they don't confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. When you see the term Jesus Christ, that's talking about the one true and living God coming in the flesh. Jehovah has come in the flesh. They deny that. Verse 9 of 2 John, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. So you've got, not everybody's got God. You've got to know what the doctrine of Christ is. You've got to. If you don't abide in the doctrine of Christ, you have not God. That means somebody who was saved and then got convinced of something else. The spirit of deception. The spirit of the world. Convince them of something else. They lose God. He that abideth, let's everybody say abideth. abideth. Abideth in the doctrine of Christ. He hath both the Father and the Son. So if you want to make sure you've got the right doctrine of Christ, you're going to have the Father and the Son. And the Father is going to dwell in you, and we're going to be in the body of Christ, which is the Son. Verse 10. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, what doctrine that in Christ is both the Father and the Son, receive him not into your house, neither be him Godspeed. Why? What he, now, that's not talking about us witnessing to them. It's talking about them witnessing to us. So if people come into your life and say, well, I don't believe that in Jesus Christ is the Father and the Son, don't bid them into your house. Don't. Why? Because it's a danger to us. It is a danger to our spiritual soul, our eternal soul. Right. I mean, because they're telling us lies that will send us to an eternal hell. And so it is a very dangerous thing. Now, again, if you're trying to win them, that's one thing. But if they're trying to win you, be careful. True. Receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. That means don't help him. Now, if they're starving to death or something, of course we feed them. But verse 11, he that biddeth him Godspeed, that prays God's blessings on him in their sin, in their false doctrine, is a partaker of his evil deeds. If you sit there and say, oh God, bless this person to propagate this false doctrine, bad stuff. Not good, because false doctrine will send people to hell. So... So any doctrine that denies God the Father has come in the flesh is the spirit of Antichrist. So what does Satan try to do? You know, you've got Jesus Christ, he comes, what is Satan? You know, he's scared to death. If the prince of this world would have known, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. The Jehovah God. And so Satan, all he's got now is a spirit of deception, a spirit of lies. So he's scared to death of Jesus Christ. And so what he tries to do is he tries to say, well, I'm going to invert your image of Jesus Christ. When you look at Jesus in Scripture, I'm going to try to get you to see something else. When something is being preached over the radio, television, internet, uh, in a church building, what he's going to constantly try to do is to get you not to see. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the conqueror. He's the victor. He defeated the works of the devil. So Satan knows he can't take on Jesus Christ. Jesus has beat him. Jesus has already beat the devil. So all the devil can do is try to deceive us, everybody in the world, from seeing a correct view of Jesus Christ. He tries to say, you know, it's like a mirror. It's like one of those mirrors you look in, you go to the thing, and it would make me look skinny. You know, you look in that mirror, it makes you look skinny. Invert. So his whole goal is just invert the truth. Don't really see who Jesus is. Because if we're worshiping the true Jesus, serving the true Jesus, then 
he's beat. Satan is dead, so to speak. I mean, he just can't do it. So his goal, he does psychological warfare. He does psyops, all that. And so the truth, that's the reason we're supposed to come to church. The more often as we see that day approaching, because the faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And the truth, we're the pillar and ground of the truth. So 1 John 2, 23, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. So when you deny Jesus, because the Father's in Jesus, you've denied the Father as well. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son, a true doctrine of the Son, hath the Father also. Why? Because in Jesus Christ is the Father in flesh. This is what the great proclamation that the church is built upon means. Matthew 16, 16, Simon Peter answered Jesus. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. What does that mean? The Christ, the Son of the living God, indicates that Jesus fulfilled all the Old Testament qualifications that he was the Jewish Messiah. Or in Greek, that's Christ. It means the same thing. One's Hebrew, one is Greek. And since these prophecies show that the Messiah was to be God in flesh, like Isaiah 43, verse 3, Zechariah 14, 6, Isaiah 7, 14, Isaiah 9, 6, uh, Isaiah 35, 4 through 6, on and on and so forth. In Jesus is both flesh and spirit, humanity and deity. So when Peter said that, you're the Christ, you're the promised Messiah, well, the promised Messiah was supposed to be Jehovah in human form to have blood to shed for our sins. So when Peter said that, he's saying the oneness of God. So the church is built on an understanding, a revelation of who Jesus is. A church may have good works, and it's supposed to, but our church can't be built on good works. Or we'll go to hell because all of our good works are filthy rags. Amen. Our good works have to come out of an understanding of who Jesus is and an obedience to that understanding. So the church is built on the foundation of God in flesh, Jesus Christ, Jehovah in human form. That is what the church is built on. If you're building a church on any other thing, Jesus said he would build his church. But anyhow, if somebody's trying to build a church on any other thing, it is a false perception of Jesus. I don't know about you, I want the real Galilean. I want the real Nazarene. I want the one that walked the shores about 2,000 years ago. And so I don't want any lies about that. I don't want any speculation about that. Where do we get understanding about that? We get it out of the Word of God. We get it out of Scripture. 2 Corinthians 5.19 goes a little further into this. To wit, we're talking about the spirit of Antichrist militates against this doctrine. Because if you don't have this doctrine, you don't have a true church. 2 Corinthians 5.19 To wit, that God was in Christ. Theos was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto him. Them, excuse me, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. God was in Christ. Father in the Son. Father in the Son. God was in Christ. And so you don't have to come up with non-biblical language, unbiblical language, third century Greek thought, fourth century creeds. All you need is the Word of God. And when you have, it's not, great is the mystery of Godliness, God was manifest in the flesh, but it's not some mystery that we don't know who we're worshiping. We're worshiping Jesus Christ. And He is the Lamb on the throne. And you see the Father and the Son. When you've seen the face of Jesus Christ, you've seen the glory of God, the Shekinah of God. Just like you did Moses in the Old Testament, it was reflected glory in the New Testament. It is inside glory coming out. 1 Timothy 2, 5 shares this a little further. And it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So you have God who's on the throne, and because he's everywhere at once, he's also fully in Jesus Christ, and his humanity is our mediator. Yes. And so that's how you build a church. Is you start preaching the doctrine of who Jesus is. Yes. And the light comes on in people's hearts and minds. You might have to fight some false doctrine. 
You might have to fight some worldly things. You might have to fight some strongholds that have been set up even over centuries. You might have to do all that. But I'm going to tell you, they will all crumble at the power of the oneness of God in Jesus Christ. And again, anything else we worship is just trying to soothe our conscience. We're not worshiping God in spirit and truth if we're not worshiping that one true and living God. So we need to understand Why don't we pray right this second before we go any further. God, help us know the truth out of the word of God about who you are. Let's everybody talk to Jesus. God, I glorify you. I'm asking you to give me a revelation, Jesus, an understanding, and an illumination, God, of who you are, the one God in human form, God, the Father and the Son, God, in Jesus' mighty name. We tear down every stronghold in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that would try to prevent that understanding and that revelation from coming in people's hearts and minds in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let people know, God, let them have a sense of urgency that that is the most important thing in their lives is to know you, the one true and living God. In Jesus' mighty name, give a sense of urgency in this area. Break down strongholds. God, in Jesus' name we ask it. And let's everybody say amen. And why don't we clap our hands to Jesus. Go be good. First John chapter 5, verses 20 and 21 says, And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding. Now, what did he give us an understanding about? Well, he tells us that we may know him that is true. Him, singular. And we are in him that is true. Even in his Son, Jesus Christ. Now, who is Jesus Christ? He tells us. This is the true God and eternal life. That's who Jesus Christ is. The true God and eternal life. And then he ends the entire epistle with this. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. What do you think he meant by idols? We know covetousness can be idols. Anything that comes between us and Jesus is an idol. But in that particular context... He's saying if anybody comes to you and says that in Jesus Christ, the Father and the Son, that He is the true God and eternal life, you're worshiping an idol. I don't want to worship an idol. I want to worship the one that came and died for my sins, that carried my sins on His back. Hallelujah. You might say, but they're so nice and sweet. Well, that's great. Again, Satan can come as an angel of light. Be careful. It's, if they're nice and sweet, it is our job to show them the truth in love and to see them born again of water and spirit. The worst thing you can do is leave them in a false perception of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful somebody explained to me about who Jesus is. Amen. 2 Corinthians 11 and 4, talking about Antichrist here tonight, says, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Let's everybody say another Jesus. Uh-oh, that means that there's Lots of different views about Jesus. Remember, many deceivers have entered into the world whom we have not preached. So you better be preaching the same Jesus that the apostles preached. Notice whom we, not just Paul, this isn't just Paul's gospel. This was everybody was preaching the same Jesus. Or if you receive another spirit which you have not received or another gospel which you have not accepted, the Bible says in Galatians 1, 8 and 9, let you be accursed about another gospel you might well bear with him. So he's telling the Corinthian church, if they get up and tell you false doctrine, you might believe it. Now, unfortunately, it is a truism that a lie can go around the world before truth can get his boots on. That's true. That's what Mark Twain said. A lie can go around the world before truth can get his boots on. And so that's just a fact. So you better filter everything through Scripture through the Word of God, better fall in love with Jesus like you've never fallen up. Because I'm going to tell you, in the United States of America right this second, and I'm not the only one with this testimony, it's every spiritual person I know, really, that's in the truth. They all say we are dealing with spirits in the United States of America we have never dealt with before. Amen. And it is making people believe a lie. Truth is falling into the street. 
People are calling good evil and evil good. They're calling black white, white black. They're calling everything crazy out there, and they're trying to cram it down our throats. We're going to see that's actually a indication of the Antichrist. So fall in love with truth. Love people that will tell you the truth. If you got a preacher that will tell you the truth, you need to love him, pray for him, support him in every way you can. Because, friend, there's a lot of people that will not. They're hiring and they'll cave in even a little bit so you and I can't have the truth. Matthew 24, 24. This is Jesus' Olivet Discourse. He says, For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall delete, deceive the very elect. So there's going to be false miracles, false signs, false prophets, and false Christ. Now, if you go to overseas, if you go to like Nepal, there'll be people standing in line for close to a mile, maybe longer than a mile, because somebody will claim that they're Christ. And uh, they'll have that. You just wouldn't believe. The Philippines, there's people that claim to be Jesus Christ. Miami, Florida, there's a guy that claims to be Jesus Christ. He's worth millions of dollars. Has tons of followers out there. This type of thing. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. Um, you may have heard of the newspaper, the Washington Times. That was owned by a man by the name of Reverend Sun Young Moon. What did Sun Young Moon believe? He believed he was Jesus Christ. He says, I am the Christ. And this is a national publication. He owned other things as well. So this is all around us where people are claiming to be Jesus and it is getting worse. When you go, when, when I was in Jerusalem, I asked the Jewish people, I said, what is that sign? They said, we hate to tell you what that sign is. I said, well, please tell me what the sign is. I want to know because I'm seeing the poster all over Jerusalem. They said, that is Rabbi Menachem Shearson. And we believe he is Messiah. We believe that he is Christ. Then they've got rival Christ out there. You see another sign. I said, well, who is that? They said, well, that's Rabbi, and I forget the name right now. They said, we believe he's Jesus Christ. We believe he is Christ. He is the Jewish Messiah. And so this is around the world that people are believing in false Christ. And uh, in denominationalism, people get false views of who Jesus is just so people can have a big church and a crowd, and somehow soothe their conscience. Because the major thing of religion is to soothe your conscience, to give enough, to do enough, instead of what we need to do is humble ourselves, and the one that's already satisfied everything for sin is Jesus Christ. Get an understanding of who Jesus is. And that's what we do in a community. Every apostolic, truth-proclaiming church shows what truth is and preaches the truth. There's apostolics here in this city, and, and boy, you are going to get mad at me, and I love you anyhow, but there's former apostolics in this city that claim to be apostolic. They say they believe what we believe. They don't. They came out from us, but they are not of us. If they would have been of us, they would have stayed with us, and they are not preachers. At least they weren't the last time I heard them speak, and I've heard them multiple times. They are not preaching the same Jesus Christ. You say, yeah, but they got a big church. Well, the Atlanta Falcons have 70,000 people. What's that got to do with the price of eggs in China? It's got nothing to do with numbers. It's got everything to do with truth. Amen. All right. So the prophesied Antichrist, this one who through spirit, but an Antichrist in flesh, is probably alive right now. We don't know who he is. We don't know. I don't know, you don't know. It is a vain show for people to constantly try to say it's Mikhail Gorbachev. It is whoever that's out there. Just stop. We should be trying to win people to God. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, they used to think it was Ronald Wilson Reagan. Ronald, six letters. Wilson, six letters. Reagan, six letters. He rode a white, white horse on his ranch. In his ranch, he, the address of his ranch was 1666 something. See, they said it's, it's him, Henry Kissinger. They were sure Henry Kissinger was the Antichrist. Well, if he is, he's getting really old. Same with Mikhail Gorbachev. Reagan's dead. Back in the day, they were positive it was Benito Mussolini reigning over a revived Roman Empire. So the key is, is we know he is coming, but 
You just keep winning people to Jesus Christ. That is our goal. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning at verse number 3, tells us a little bit about what's going to happen during this time of Antichrist. It is very informative. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 3. I don't think we're going to be able to make it through all of these scriptures tonight, but I would really like to, but we'll see how it goes. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 3. It says, what's Paul tell the Thessalonian church? Let no man deceive you by any means. I want to tell everybody here the same thing. Don't let anybody deceive you by any means. I'll tell you like Paul said. If I, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel that I preach to you, let him be accursed. If I ever get up here and tell you the Trinity's right, John 3.16 is the total plan of salvation, then run me out of here, please. Run, just stop. I mean, just don't. Because let him be a curse. I'm only going to preach the truth. And we want people who love truth. Speak the truth in love. Well, that went over like the proverbial lead balloon. <laughs> let no man deceive you by any means. I know I'm in my right mind right now. I'm preaching the truth of the Word of God. I don't care if it's your children. I don't care if it's your brother. I don't care if it's who. What did it say back in the Old Testament? It says if it's the wife that lays in your bosom, whatever. It says you're supposed to take. Now, this was Old Testament. We don't do this in the New Covenant. But in the Old Testament, it was so serious. You took them out and you stoned them. You killed them. And it said, let your hand be first upon them. Didn't matter if it was your relative, your best friend, or who. Why? Because our soul is the most important thing in all the world. It's more important than fellowship, more important than anything. So, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And uh, we're seeing that in apostasia in the Greek language, falling away. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And Judas was also went into perdition. So he's a type of Antichrist. Some people think Antichrist is going to be either Nero or Judas reincarnated. But uh, we don't believe in reincarnation, so we won't even go into all of that. Who opposeth and exalt, this is talking about Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. Now notice he has to be revealed. He's going to be alive and doing things, but he's going to be revealed. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship. So he is going to oppose God. And he is going to oppose those who worship God. So if any governmental leader that is going to oppose God and the worship of God, you know that they've got the spirit of Antichrist, even if they are not the Antichrist. Any government, you can do this litmus test. The litmus test of the spirit of Antichrist is not who gives us the most goodies and who gives us the most money. It is the person that would defy and come against those that love God or come against God himself. He's going to oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God or it is worship. In Daniel 11, 20, it talks about uh, one in that lineage being a raiser of taxes. They're going to take a lot more than the 10% tithe that God requires. So, that's just, that was free right there. Don't even have to do anything. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. That could mean he sits in us through false doctrine. Or it could mean in Jerusalem there's going to be a rebuilt temple. Now, those of you that follow these things closely, you know that there is the Temple Institute in Jerusalem that has already got every article for the rebuilt temple. I've seen it. I've been there. You can go online and look at it. They've already got the high priest garments. They've got the labor of water. They've got the trumpets. They've got everything. So all that is waiting is for the temple to be rebuilt and the Antichrist to come sit in that temple. Why would he sit in that temple? Because that is where traditionally the Shekinah glory is and he wants to be seen as God. 
So every time you hear about things happening in the Middle East, look, people say, well, the Mosque of Omar, the Dome of the Rock is there. It can't be rebuilt. Do you know that could be blown up tonight? Amen. I'm not suggesting anybody do that. There's a fault line that runs over that. When God gets ready, that temple's going to get rebuilt. And it can happen like that. We saw the Berlin Wall fall like that. We saw uh, the communist wall fall like that. And when things start to happen, they happen speedily. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And then Paul says, remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. So Paul preached prophecy. Now, you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So something is withholding the spirit of Antichrist from coming up. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Remember John said there's many Antichrists in the world that came out from the church. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth, which is a King James word for stoppeth, will stop until he, the church of the living God, be taken out of the way. So evidently, and, and I'm no big dogmatist or just real stern on your understanding of prophecy. You might be post-trip, mid-trip, after six seal, after the uh, 2,340 days or whatever it is, whatever the case is. But I'm just going to tell you, it looks to me from Scripture that what's stopping the one individual from coming into the world is the church of the living God and we're stopping it from total, the, the book of Revelation being fulfilled until we be taken out of the way. That would traditionally be called the rapture of the church. Now it's not us personally, it's the spirit of God that is in us. So there's a day where we will be taken out of the way and the Antichrist that's already at work, and the spirit of Antichrist that's already at work, will then rise to the top. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That wicked, that's another title for Antichrist. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. It's been said the Antichrist will be Satan incarnate as Jesus Christ was God incarnate after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So there is a spiritual dimension coming on this world that uh, there's going to be lying wonders to deceive if it was possible, even the very elect. So be careful. You might hear about miracles. You might hear about signs. That's the reason you should not follow signs and wonders. Signs and wonders should follow you. You should follow the truth of who Jesus Christ is. All right, let's keep going here. Now, verse 10. Remember, one of the words that you hear repeated about the end time is some derivative of the word deceive. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Who's the they? The people that are here left after the rapture of the church shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So what's going to be the doorway for this deception to come in? Pleasure in unrighteousness. So you need to be careful about your entertainment choices. Because if you have pleasure in unrighteousness, that is the doorway for deception. That's the reason the Bible says, who goes to the lake of fire? Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So be very careful. Because, see, a strong delusion, you'll think you're saved and be lost. You'll think you've got, you're right and you're wrong. That spirit of delusion is terrible. The book of Isaiah says God himself will choose our delusions. 
Let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verse number 25. We're going to try to come to a quick close in the next few minutes. Daniel 7, 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change. Okay, now here's the thing. He's going to think to change times and laws. They've already in history changed times. It used to be A.D., Anno Domini, which means the year of our Lord, and B.C., which is before Christ. If you go to college now, or in your high school, it is B.C.E., before the Common Era, and then C.E., Common Era. Why? Because they had to take Jesus Christ out of time. They are, we just had apostolic brother write a book and he, he switched to this and people were just very upset about that but his excuse was it was in college they had they you have to do this or you'll flop you now maybe you should consider not going into that branch of science i don't know or in that branch of education but anyhow the thing is so think to change time now also think to change laws we have a little thing to erase with here Maybe underneath here. I don't know. Change laws. Like guys, if they feel like a girl, can go in a girl's bathroom. And girls can go in a guy's bathroom. Laws. Change laws. That two people of the same gender can get married. Look, it's, I'm just quoting scripture. Y'all get mad. I tell you what, just get so mad at the Bible that you'd start to believe it. <laughs> just get mad I didn't like that I mean it's an abomination to God all that stuff and you know it is quit being conformed to this world get on your knees talk in tongues we're trying to form our bodies into something that's pleasing to the eye and then instead of letting God form our spirits into something that's pleasing unto him all right so he'll think. Here's what the Antichrist will do. He'll think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand. He'll be successful until a time and times and a dividing of time. It's three and a half years. So you think that it's bad now. Wait till the rise of Antichrist. I have people tell me often. They say, now Pastor Waldron, I'm not going to live for God now. But when I see the Antichrist, I'm coming in. Stop. Deception. Strong delusion. You're not. If you can't live for God where there's freedom of religion, air conditioning, padded pews, internet, you're definitely not going to live for God with a strong delusion out there telling you that you know all this stuff is wrong is right and right is wrong. You're not. It's going to be a different playing field. People tend to think they're going to be able to fight the devil on the same level they always have. They don't know when the delusion comes. It's much harder. And so he'll think to change times and laws. We're already seeing that. That is the spirit of Antichrist at work. I'll repeat that. That is the spirit of Antichrist at work. You and I should have nothing to do. We should pray for them, believe God for their salvation while there's still time. Don't ever justify the wicked. All right, Revelation 13, 4. We're trying to come to a quick close. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who's like unto the beast? Who's able to make war with him? There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, same as Daniel 7, 25. And blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue, same length of time, 42 months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. That may be the 144,000 or their converts during the tribulation period. And power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Verse 16 Skipping over a lot. There's a lot here. I encourage you to study it in your private time. 
And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, a particular man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six, or as we say it, six, 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 but it's really six hundred, three score and six. This day is coming. We already see the one world monetary system, one world government. The world is integrating itself. That's what globalization is, internationalism is. There are no safe world currencies. None of them are backed by gold, silver, precious metals. The rise of this could happen like that. Church, I want to encourage you. I love you. I want you to be ready. I want you to be prayed up. I want you to be fasted up. I want you to be acting up for Jesus, doing a great work for God when Jesus comes again because this day is soon to come. Amen. Remember on Sunday, we talked about one of the signs of the end time. People will be scoffers saying it's not coming. Church, it may be closer than you know. Jesus, I believe, could come tonight. He could come in the morning. He could come tomorrow night. He, and He could come for any of us individually tonight. So Jesus is coming. That is one of the great facts. They say there's two great facts of life, death and taxes. No, there's three. That Jesus is coming again. Amen. Jesus is coming again. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's pray. Ask God to open our hearts and lives to receive of the word of truth that we've heard tonight. God, I love you. I love your people. God, I'm asking you don't let anybody here be deceived, God. I know the frog in the kettle syndrome. I know the meaning of God in the name of Jesus. God, I'm asking you to help people just love your truth, God. Give them discernment against the demonic spirits in the media, the other pressures that are coming against them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the truth and the power of the Holy Ghost manifest itself in our life. Let us have great revival. Let us seek you more than our necessary food. Let us worship you, exalt you, praise you, adore you, love you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise you, serve you, obey you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us have great revival till you come again, Lord Jesus Christ. God, I don't know if you're coming in 216, 217, or 2107. I have not a clue. But God, I know that I'm watching for you to come. Lord Jesus Christ, and I know this world is getting turned upside down, topsy-turvy. I know things are happening like you said it was going to happen in the Bible. God, they've never had gay marriage before. They've never had all transgenderism before. They just never existed before. So God, they're changing times. God, they're changing laws. These things are happening before our very eyes. They're trying to take Christmas out of the public holidays, changing times. Trying to change Resurrection Sunday out of public holidays, seeking to change times. Anything that does with Jesus Christ, they're trying to take it out. Change times and seasons, times and laws. They're trying to change these things. God, I glorify you. Strengthen every soul. Let every soul be apostolic. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you cry out to Jesus for a little bit? Why don't you seek him while he might be found? Why don't you pray? God, I glorify you. You've got a strong body, a powerful body, an anointed body, God. Let us make it in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Be encouraged in the name of Jesus. Keep praying. Keep reading the word. Keep loving the word. Keep witnessing. Let's see great revival till Jesus comes again. You know, I feel like Jeremiah sometimes. The Babylonians are coming. And there's all these prophets. No, he's not. No, they're not. No, they're not. And it happened just like Jeremiah said. Look, the scriptures decree these things. It's got nothing to do with me. It's got everything to do with scripture. And this is happening in our day. And it is serious business. And I know the spirit of Antichrist has deceived. It's deceived apostolics. I know it has. I'm positive of it. And I can tell you how I'm positive of it, but I would hurt too many of your feelings. And I love your feelings, and I want you to just keep living for Jesus Christ. And uh, all this. But I love the truth far more than I love your feelings. I love God far more than I love any of that. But I'm just going to... You know that, it, that you know there is people out there because they have a smile 
They can be the most evil, wicked people in the world and they have a smile. That is called deception. They can sit there and say, I am in favor of killing in America 2,700 babies every day and smile and you think it's okay because you believe the smile instead of looking at what they're doing. They'll have a smile and say, we, are for, we want to starve every country that is against gay marriage. We're not going to help them. And they smile. That's called deception. Don't let them deceive you. Look at what they're doing. If people are for the killing of babies and they're for immorality, they are not of God. Amen. Stop. We want them saved. I'm not saying they're the Antichrist or anything. I pray for them. I love them. I want them to get the Holy Ghost, get baptized in Jesus' name. Jesus does too. He wants it worse than any of us do. It's not His will that any should perish. But don't deceive yourself thinking they're okay. You're okay if you're living for Jesus. You've got what they need. Amen. Don't follow them. Follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Follow the Word of Jesus Christ. So be very careful in this end time hour. I'm going to tell you, I never dreamed it would get this bad. Never had a clue it would get this bad. We always said it'd be, you know, Jesus said it as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. So it would be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man as it was in the days of Noah. It's like, yeah, but, you know, we don't even read that they had gay marriage in the days of Sodom. We, we don't. So live for Jesus Christ. Stay prayed up. Love God. It doesn't matter if your co-workers believe it. It doesn't matter the pressure your spouse may put you under. It doesn't matter any pressures that are out there. Let Jesus Christ be your guide. And separation does not imply isolation. We've still got to be salt and light. We've got to have a gospel and a power of God that is strong enough to be in the marketplace seeing lives change. Now's not the time to hunker down in the woods somewhere. Build a compound. Don't do any of that stuff. Be out there living for God, the power of the Holy Ghost. Anyhow, I love you, church. Let's talk to Jesus one more time. God, I glorify you. I love you, Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to fight against the spirit of the world. We'll be salmon swimming upstream, but we're going to get to our final destination in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Open every heart, open every spirit, open every mind in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to truth. Let people have a love for truth. God, let people... Birth in people, a love for truth, God. Of ourselves, God, or of things around us, or about doctrine. Truth, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I glorify you. We want your spirit, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why don't we just give glory to the Lord right now? neighbor right now. Just pray for the person next to you. Maybe you need to step out from where you're at. Ask God to bless them really good. I feel like we need the strength of the Holy Ghost in the end time. God, I glorify you. I love you. I'm asking you in the power of the Holy Ghost, let Brother Ron constantly live in you. Let him live in your truth, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the kingdom of lies fall. God, I glorify you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I praise you, God. In Jesus' mighty name, do miracles, God. Do signs, do wonders. Raise up people. The people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits and turn many to righteousness. God, in this end time hour, let it happen in the name of Jesus. Do miracles, God. Do miracles, God. In Jesus' mighty name, I love you, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, well, church, I love you. More than anything, God loves us all, and I'm glad about it. Let's have a great week in the Holy Ghost. Don't forget the things we've got coming up. God bless you.